Good afternoon, CNN, what a show. Thank you very much for making life. Thank you very much for bringing us all around and talk together without masks, keeping our distances. And I don't have one of those long microphones, so please use those when your time comes. I will start by saying I was impressed this morning's session, and I'm very impressed by listening to statistics. I love your conclusion, Captain Adam. It was a perfect conclusion. We need a circular economy. But I do also believe that digitalization can help us to reach the decarbonization process, provided that we all talk about the same thing. And Captain Adami was right. When you see ICT itself, it generates in 2018 730 million carbon dioxide tons, while aviation itself, 800 million tons. By that number, when you take, of course, into account that 80% of aviation is for flying passengers, that means 640, lower than ICT. Correct. But if I infuse to that another element where I do calculate who has to do the decarbonization, which is you, me, the individual, all 70% of the population of the Earth is using ICT and only 10% of the population of Earth flies. <coughs> and out of the 7%, sorry, out of the 10%, 4% does international. The other 6%, it does domestic. Which that tells you, actually, which country flies more than anybody else. We're not going to that, but what I'm trying to say here, because on this panel, we're gonna talk about shipping, how to use digitalization, and if possible, to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And it boils down to individual decisions. So it would be the individual company as a legal entity, or it would be the individual person as a ship owner, or the individual third party manager to decide whether well, I'm reducing my footprint or not. And with that introduction, I can say that in this world that we're living today, we are actually coming to the fourth industrial revolution. We had water as steam, we had automation, we had uh, information technology, and we came now to something that the only way to, to explain what it is is not digitalization, is the fusion of digital, biological, and anthropological. So digitalization itself is not the fourth revolution. The fourth revolution is when we get everybody all together and mixing the two. I'm wearing an, a, a, an electronic watch. I'm having something on my head, so we become cyborg in a way. So this is not what I want to discuss. You know my panelists. The ones that they haven't been on the panel before is Paula here, and Alex Diosivides from the Cyprus, chamber, um, Cyprus Shipping Chamber. Mm -hmm. I always make the wrong uh, expression on that. And I will ask them one question, and you know the time is very limited, so please keep on time so we leave the people time to, um, to respond to us if they have any questions. I am in shipping nearly 30 years now, and one of the worst case scenarios that I learned, although we have very simple technology on board ships, we don't really have sophisticated technology on board ships. And we reached that point in 1973, we really got there to the very, very big technology. We had ships coming out of the shipyard with jet engines. And one month later, we sent them from the shipyard to the um, recycling, as we call it today. On that time, it would be beaching. It could be anything else. Because some <coughs> that, you know, we have a car. <coughs> Since then, we have developed a number of technologies to make ships more efficient, so they spend the more energy you squeeze out of a molecule of fuel, the more energy you have, and the longer you go, or, more, or you have more transport capacity. So, the efficient, 
You spend more time at sea, you cargo more cargo, then you become rich because you have more cargo. But apparently, we don't see the technology up the uptake as we've seen on land, as we see in aviation. It's very slow. So the question is simple. If we believe that that kind of thing is too slow, how can we expect that in the next five years, because in 2025, 2027, closing to 2030, we have to at least do what IMO promised for the first period, which is the period 2030. Not to mention that some already have told us yesterday, actually, Energy and Transport in Brazil told us that we, in accordance to UNCLOS and in accordance to customary law, the uh, agreement in Paris does actually supersede uh, what I know and what I know, what I know does and what I know doesn't do. So my question is simple. From your experience and from your own perspective, why do you think shipping will now come and say, I want to take digitalization? I am not going to be so slow as I did before. And since we only have one lady who did not participate before, I give you the first floor, Paula, and it has nothing to do with gender. It's simply you haven't been here before. When it's red, it's red. Okay. Now we need red. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. I'm Paula Hakilamri. I'm the Director of Business Development at MicroCity and Scott It's a pleasure being here today, and I feel very lucky with all these gentlemen around me, actually. Uh, and I am going to start by using your phrase, I noted down a pencil, like a good student would. The future is coming fast, and we need to be and it's coming fast as in ways of not um, using digitization towards decarbonization to be, let's say, as safe as we were, but in order to be safer than we used to be. And I think these are two uh, watchwords that we will be using for a long time for the next decades because yeah, we need to build for the future. Uh, they do go together if we take uh, in mind the fact that we have now 3D printing and additive um, technology, which means that we can actually print out spare parts and we can use them. And so that will take a shorter time for repairs in the ship so they don't end up in the shipyard or in the recycle bin, let's say. Uh, and that is one aspect of the whole shipping industry that comes to respond to the demand of the new era that we're all facing. I mean, given the fact that due to COVID, shipping now is more needed than ever because, uh, and especially this is also the year that I'm always dedicating to the seafarers, God bless them because it's because of them that we all had food on our table. Um, so we do need to uh, see today as an arena, not for fear um, and um, pessimism because we had COVID, but as an, as an arena of opportunity, of innovation, of research, and grab this momentum that we're creating now so as to put these two important words together in action and make things happen. We need to build for the future and of course, in order to build for the future, we need to realize that we need all of us, all the key stakeholders, we need to invest uh, in educating the right staff. I have a 10-year-old son who um, loves robotics. For me, it's, oh, you're going to build some robots with Lego? He's doing algorithms, which means that in the near future, he might be in this industry using all these new technologies. But if we don't educate our youth now, they will come in a decade and they will say, we didn't prepare. And basically we will be in the same standpoint. Um, so I think that we're heading towards decarbonization via digitization, don't worry, Scott. Digitalization. Uh, <laughs> digitalization. <laughs> digitalization. Um, combined, with, with combined with the research for combined gas um, and steam, Turbine engine, CFC. I mean, we've already uh, seen articles and researches about unmanned vessels as well as um, main electric motors replacing the engine room. So you see that it's chapter by chapter being 
built and been created for the next decade, for tomorrow. Um, and as we like to say in the fitting world, let's steam ahead without further ado. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Ale. Andreas, <laughs> you'll allow me to, to make a small change to the... Uh, change the tune title of the, of the panel and say not how digitalization will drive decarbonization, but to address how decarbonization will drive digitalization and digital solutions in our industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not an IT technology expert or a ship operator, so I will not attempt to explain if uh, technologies will pose challenges or uh, are considered futuristic. <coughs> The fact is that in the next few decades, and until carbon-free fuels have been uh, developed, the shipping industry will be faced with a multitude of regulatory challenges that we will have to meet. And as you mentioned, the pressure on our industry to decarbonize is immense, and the 2050 timeline that was agreed at the IMO for a 50% reduction in our emissions, I am certain that it will change to zero emissions. The pressure is there. And, uh, I believe it will be agreed soon at the IMO in their final emissions reduction strategy. And by today's technologies, this is not achievable. We need carbon-free fuels. But as you said, the important target is the 2030 target, which means says that we need to achieve 40% efficiency uh, improvement of the fleet compared to 2008 levels. And this will provide the immediate and the biggest challenges for our industry when it comes to technical and operational solutions. The IMO has agreed short-term measures last November to meet the 2030 target, and these measures, they set a continuous efficiency improvement target for the ships until 2030 from now. This means that the ship built to the required technical efficiencies, like the EEDI or the existing ships that will meet the EEXI or the so-called um, existing ship <clears throat> efficiency index will not be able to sit back and relax. To meet these ever increasing efficiency requirements, owners will be forced to continue <coughs> technological and operational solutions. So far, a ship's efficiency performance was affecting possibly its commercial employability. Now, the performance will also affect its regulatory compliance, and it will be subject to punishment by the regulators if it doesn't mean if it doesn't meet or fails to meet the required target. Therefore, the answer is that owners will need no convincing to turn to digitalization and digital solutions. They will have to look at digitalization as an essential ingredient in their efficiency drive and emissions reduction efforts if they will want to remain compliant and competitive and in the market in the next few decades. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I'll go to Francis. Before I go to capture that down, well, because I hope you might bring the Ayala point, and you're not only dealing with the ship per se. So, Francis. Yeah. Thank you, Andreas. Well, <coughs> as you said, the Ayala is not really the organization for decarbonization, and I'm not an expert, but I know Paul has the son will not be a seafarer, but an e-farer. <laughs> 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 but in my relatively long uh, time in, in shipping, both as a mariner and a regulator and now as an international organization, I have learned that shipping is driven by two things, either regulation or business case. That's the two things that drives uh, shipping. Uh, and so the digital solution need to help one of those two, otherwise it will not succeed. So if you look at um, a business case, I think there are many opportunities for digitalization to give the ship owner a better business case. We heard uh, Dr. Steve Popolos talk about route optimization, optimization, which is very important. I know a study in the Baltic Sea uh, figured out that you could save, it was an enormous amount of fuel if you uh, optimize the route uh, just in time arrival, et cetera, et cetera. And that is really a good opportunity for a good business case for ship owners to save uh, fuel and time. And then I remember from being a regulator in the Danish Maritime Authority, uh, we had a big concern that we could not uh, reinforce the regulation. So we could not create a, a level playing field for all the ship owners. You have a cheater coming in with crude oil, and he could transport the goods much cheaper than Musk, a 
good company that will always comply with all the uh, IMO uh, regulations, etc. So the, the authority they need to punish the ship owners, the cheat, so that uh, you know, serious ship owners can survive. And <coughs> Yeah, um, digitalization means digits. It means one and zero. And in shipping, we have not understood this. And in the regulatory framework, we have not understood this. Ships do not come with equipment which is electronically digitized. I do not have electronic manuals. I do not have electronic spare part catalogs. I do not have electronic operational procedures from the maker as the system should be used. That means I have no digitalization. So I, I have algorithms, I can build algorithms. Your son will be great in that. <coughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't have the basic data to succeed. So at first and foremost, we should mandate by regulatory force the ship owners themselves can't do that by, by force, that every equipment installed on board a vessel should be accompanied with a standard electronic format of its technical documentation. Once we achieve this, we can build our systems in the shipping companies, in the association framework, in the academia, to negotiate with that data which is collected in order to let the algorithm suggest the better decision-making tools. Uh, sometimes I have to spend more fuel in order to save later. Sometimes I have to put this throttle full down in order to get away from the storm. Can my engine do that? If I refer this case now to an operational manual <coughs> in form of a computer, the system can tell me probably you can do it. So if I have a better decision-making tool based on the actual equipment what I have, I can perform digitalization and I can significantly reduce our emissions. But I have to start with the basic data. It's a no-burner that we, we do not have our equipment in digital format electronically uh, available. So I would recommend focus on the regulatory framework to mandate e-manuals. Thank you. Dimitri. Yes. Thank you. I mean, if I may summarize this first question, because my second question will be smaller, but that will be the crack of the issue, because we need a return on investment, whatever we do. But summarizing that, I heard that 
decarbonization will bring or try digitalization, not digitalization, <coughs> digital, and I have very well uh, uh, Captain Adam saying to me that that was saying to us, definitely before I dressed out to go, I need to have a shower, if I may say so. So I cannot today, I'm a primitive and tomorrow morning I'm, a, I'm on a digital platform and I know it as much. We have very well that we need to have the data and we need to electronize ourselves. But the point I would take from Captain Abani, the last one that you make a plea, let's have a regulatory framework to bring in place the digital world or bring us to the, the third revolution, which is automation by using information technology and then go to digital. And we're missing something else. What about the third parties that will push us to digitalize ourselves? We cannot exist without terminals. We cannot exist without ports. We cannot exist with agents. We cannot exist without stewards. We cannot exist without formalities and facilities at the port. They are smart. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's a number of ports around the world without naming them. They are already smart. And they're pushing towards it because they find one sector that really responds to that. And that's the box sector, the container sector. Obviously, we respond to that because they are uh, liners, like the line of passenger ships. They have to do it, like our cruise ships. So for me, everything we said, if I want to put my own input to the discussion, is that I agree that decarbonization will force us to use digital solutions. I agree with Captain Dan in one million percent that we are not ready unless we become ready, and we need a regulatory framework can you believe that not all flag states still accept digital logbooks and stuff like that? I mean, for God's sake, we're in 2021. We need to go there without pinpointing any flag state at all. <laughs> uh, but my second question is, we are in the early stages. We are in actually shipping uh, accelerated digitalization simply because of COVID. A fortunate event, but the, a challenge became an opportunity. Question here. If I run to do it tomorrow, after we have this beautiful panel with beautiful experts, I am the first owner to go and do it. Will I gain competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis the others in the game? And I want that not sectorial because, <coughs> I mean, uh, I, I spent a few years, the last, last few years of my career lately with cruise ships, so I know they're very digitalized, they're very advanced in that way. Container ships are more or less the same. So in general, Captain Adami, will I get a meritorious investment? If I invest now, will I actually gain a competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis -vis the rest of the sector or the competitors? Andreas, absolute yes. I mean, you will gain it back. And, and, and I believe if you don't start to invest now in your digital transformation roadmap, you will lose the business case after all, the, the train is running and it is running fast. And I, I saw in the presentations today, it's not a, a train, it's a speed car, it's a racing car, it's a Formula One car. So we are there. Technology actually is there as well. Connectivity is there. We had the brilliant presentation from KVH today. So you have to embrace it. Uh, if you don't embrace it in your own company, it will be your clients, it will be your collaborators who do it and then you cannot connect to them. The next day you are out of business. So you have to start from now. And, and you have to take it serious. Mind you, it will be a change of your culture. So the top to bottom approach uh, has to be applied. Top management, shareholders have to come in first and to mandate it downwards, uh, but it's a must. <coughs> get a payback. I totally agree. Um, and having in mind, you know, what you said, uh, if I go a bit back last month, I had the opportunity to speak at a virtual conference about blockchain shipping. Uh, and I did a little bit of research and it's amazing how from 2018, there are ports that they became smart. There are smart contracts. Um, it seems that everybody is happy to um, adopt the blockchain uh, technologies, which um, I don't know if in Cyprus we have 
totally understood that blockchain is not Bitcoin <laughs> because a lot of people think that that's just it, which is not. Uh, but having a digital ledger uh, where you can register your, um, your cargo and everything in the <coughs> and know that everything is checked and you um, can in real time check either where the ship is or how much cargo, cargo was loaded or the ships of your staff, where they are. Um, this is giving you an advantage and definitely it offers lower and more cost-efficient solutions so you can have the return of profit that you're seeking, like everybody, every professional. So, um, yeah, I, I would say we, we need to invest, but there has to be step-by-step -step education first. We cannot jump into it because if you don't have the knowledge, how will you do it? So um, we do need to invest. and. Talking about key stakeholders, shareholders, I would say we do need the help of government, of ports, logistic companies. They all need to come together. Yes, do the regulation, do the legislation, and move forward. Thank you. Alex. Andreas, definitely. As I already said, the pressure is there, and it's going to be increasing as we move along. Definitely, though, and I agree with you, it will have to be in the intermediate stage. Ships will have to come up to standard to meet the whole supply chain technology advancement. But let's not fool ourselves. The carbonization is not going to be done without new fuels, okay? Digitalization, digital solutions are the way that will help the ship owners to stay ahead, to stay competitive, because efficiency is going to be the name of the game. If we are looking at efficiencies now, as I said, regulation is there. If you don't meet the regulatory requirements, you are rated D, E, you are putting yourself in a difficult situation to find employment for your ship. <coughs> so you definitely need to be efficient. You definitely need to look at how you maintain your efficiency. You definitely have to look at your digital transformation solutions. And of course, I feel, and for the sake of time, digital solutions are going to be there and necessary even after we decarbonize because the cost of the new fuels is going to be such, I believe, that efficiency again is going to be a critical factor in the sustainability and the employability and the survival of any shipping company. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Yes, uh, absolutely, as well from here. Uh, I, I think you forgot an important third party, really, because you forgot the customer. Okay. And, and uh, today you don't know who transported your goods, but maybe in the future, uh, because our generation, we are maybe lost, but our children, they are prepared to pay much more for, uh, for sustainable products. And the <coughs> company not say, we are a little bit more expensive, but we are sustainable. Yeah, we will. We are prepared to. Uh, I, I think that would be a fantastic product that will sell enormously to uh, to the young generation. They have done it. They sat together and they created something called Tracer. Okay. IBM with them. The five makers anyway. So sorry, I missed the client. I missed the customer or the company. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who in some jurisdictions also have responsibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, again, uh, without experience in shipping, but experience in what is out there in terms of algorithms, data, fusion, optimization, uh, we don't see these things applied to shipping. So uh, there are definitely immediate benefits to be taken just from conversing together and uh, applying this algorithm to, to shipping. Uh, but also another thing is uh, also the long-term effect that we can do immediately now. It's going to be a benefit because what is the, what just saying, you, what is the best time to plan the trip 10 years ago? So we can actually go back <coughs> already now, because these people are going to bring the change 10 years later. So uh, definitely let's start now. Thank you, I mean, we just told you, we are ready or not ready, it's one way, <laughs> okay? We have to get ready, call up the regulators if you require or use the third party pushers as I call them, but make sure that if you run quickly, especially nowadays, you might get a higher return on investment. But that's the simplistic way of saying it. The only problem
top level that I see is that all these things we want to do at the end of the day and have to close the panel very soon unless you have some urgent questions. The only problem I have is I cannot foresee right now the final end as it happens. <coughs> Andreas, and many thanks to the speakers of this part discussion as well. Uh,